First trip to the Maldives? Knowing what to expect before embarking on a long-awaited journey can allow you to better organize your vacation. These tips for first-time visitors to the Maldives are intended to answer all of the most often asked questions, as well as those you may not have realized you need to know. Maldives for the first time. The Maldives is famed for its luxurious overwater bungalows, which are often depicted in images. These bungalows are just breathtaking. However, for individuals who are traveling to the Maldives on a budget, there are also a lot of gorgeous local islands that they may visit, but I'll address more questions about that later in this essay. In the event that this will be your first trip to the Maldives, there are a few things that you, as a first-time visitor, should be aware of before making your way there. This is true regardless of whether you're coming here to scuba dive the amazing coral or to swim with whale sharks. Tips for the ultimate trip to the Maldives This comprehensive travel guide to the Maldives answers all of your pressing inquiries about the destination so that you can make informed decisions about how to spend your time there. Do you have questions about how long of a stay is appropriate or what currencies the resorts accept? Do you have any questions about how you can go to the islands or where you can find whale sharks. Maldives Geography The Maldives is considered to be a part of South Asia despite their location in the Indian Ocean, which is approximately 1,034 kilometers or 640 miles southwest of Sri Lanka. The 1,192 coral islands are spread out across a total of 90,000 square kilometers and are connected to one another by a chain of 26 atolls. That's a pretty big deal, right? But not every one of these islands has a permanent human population. Only around 200 are genuinely inhabited, either as local islands or as luxury resorts. Is it costly to travel to the Maldives? This is a regular and quite popular question for everyone who's going to the Maldives for the very first time. The correct response is both yes and no. Isn't that confusing? Need some assistance with the prices of your itinerary? When we look at brochures about the Maldives, of course, we see the most lavish aspect of the islands, and we wonder who can actually afford all of that luxury. In particular, honeymooners are the focus of marketing efforts, with tempting offers of romantic vacations at some of the most luxurious resorts and hotels that the Maldives has to offer. However, the Maldives may also be experienced on a budget. The true factor that determines the price difference is not the allure of the island itself, but rather the category of hotel and amenities it provides. To put that another way, the island won't be any less magnificent than any other, and the resort that is constructed on top of it will be the deciding factor in the end. It only costs 200 US dollars per night to stay at the five-star Bandos Maldives Resort, the best time of the year for the Maldives adventure. The meteorological conditions are subject to significant shifts throughout the year, in contrast to the rather stable temperatures. The months of November through April offer the most pleasant temperatures and the fewest chances of rain. It is a good time to go snorkeling, because the waters are often more tranquil. Having said that, it should be noted that this does not imply that the other months are not desirable. During your visit, it is possible that there may be no rain at all, or that there will be just brief showers that last only a few minutes each. Prices at the resorts are at their most moderate from May through November, and even into the beginning of December, which is when you will get the best deals. Consider traveling to the Maldives during one of these months if you wish to stay at a resort on a budget, and if you are planning a trip to the Maldives. For how long should you stay in the Maldives? The typical length of stay for honeymooners in the Maldives is less than five nights, the high expense of luxury is often to blame for this phenomenon, but will you have enough time to properly take advantage of everything the Maldives has to offer? I believe that 7 to 10 days is probably the most suitable time frame. Personally, I've usually spent somewhere between 8 and 12 days, although I easily could have stayed for a longer period of time. It's hard to believe, but you might assume you'll become bored while you're hanging out in paradise. But if the choice is between going back to work and staying there in paradise, most people choose the latter option. Obviously, the length of time you remain will be influenced in some way by your financial situation. You may read my post about itineraries in the Maltese below, which offers three different itineraries with prices starting at less than $500 per person. How to reach my accommodation 
In order to reach your island resort after landing at Valana International Airport, you'll either have to take a sea aircraft, a speedboat, or a domestic flight that includes a boat transfer. Since you're unable to make your own arrangements for transportation from the Male International, you will be required to pay whatever fee the resort establishes for this service. Depending on how close or far away your resort is from the airport, this cost might range anywhere from $80 to $500. Be sure to get in touch with your hotel well in advance and let them know the specifics of your upcoming flight. They'll be able to quickly schedule your transfer if you provide them with this information so that they can meet you at the airport. During the process of making your reservation, they will often make you aware of this information. After you've gone through customs and retrieved your bags, you will come upon a large number of counters that are labeled with the names of nearby hotels. If you're unable to locate yours, be sure to inquire about it because the staff members at the airport are quite helpful and pleasant. You will be responsible for paying the charges of your transport straight to your hotel using either a credit card or US dollars. A helpful travel hint for the Maldives is to book accommodation in close proximity to the international airport in Malé. These are requirements for Maldives. Without requiring any prior clearance, a visa will be issued to each and every citizen upon their arrival in the Maldives. If you're able to demonstrate that you match the conditions, which include having a return ticket, pre-booked lodging, and sufficient funds to cover your stay, you'll be granted a visa at the airport that is valid for 30 days and will allow you to enter the country. Tourists are required to fill out a declaration form at least 24 hours before they travel after the implementation of post-COVID. Best Resorts in Maldives there is no such thing as a poor choice when it comes to picking the perfect resort island in the Maldives because every single one is regarded as a premium option. Although the amount of money you have available to spend will likely be the most important factor in choosing which resort to stay at, the following resorts are often regarded as being among the best available. For absolute luxury, honeymoon and couples, the Waldorf Astoria Maldives. Each and every accommodation type features its own private pool. The Conrad Maldives Rangali Island. Guests may choose from beachfront villas or expansive ocean pavilions to accommodate numerous guests. For five-star luxury modest pricing, Paradise Island is excellent for families and those interested in water activities and over-the-water villas. Cinnamon Dunvali Maldives offers a variety of reasonably priced hotel options in addition to excellent water activities such as snorkeling and surfing. For five-star budget islands, Bandos Maldives has a magnificent house reef and a diving center, and it is the ideal destination for all kinds of vacationers, including families. Eriadu Maldives is a little island in the Maldives that is ideal for couples and has a fantastic house reef. Alcohol in the Maldives. Since the Maldives is a Muslim country, alcohol cannot be bought or consumed anywhere in the country including the main island of Malé or any of the other islands in the archipelago. This indicates that there is no alcohol available for purchase that is exempt from duty. If you make an attempt to bring it in from your original departure, the airport staff will keep it in custody until you make your next departure. The vast majority of travelers are expected to proceed to one of the island resorts where alcoholic beverages may be purchased. If you just intend on having one or two drinks per day, Paying as you go is the most cost-effective alternative, but if you plan on drinking your fair share, you may want to consider an all-included rate. A helpful piece of advice for vacationers is to purchase a bottle of wine from the resort's minibar, rather than ordering it by the glass at the resort's bar. Why not turn it into a spritzer, so that you can get more use out of your bottle? Cash or card? During your time there, the resorts will not accept cash in most cases. This means that you will book everything, including your room before you leave and pay for it before you check out, comparable to a luxury cruise ship. Your bill can be paid in full with either US dollars cash or a card. Regarding payments on nearby islands, cash is preferred, and many of these islands do not have ATMs. You're completely out of luck if either your debit card or the ATM where you're trying to withdraw the money doesn't work. Because of this, if you have any small US dollars and local cash, I'd be interested in buying them from you. The rufiyah is the unit of currency in use here, and you can purchase some whenever you like at the airport once you get there. A piece of advice for those going on vacation is to keep track of how much money they are spending so that they're not surprised by the total when they get the bill. 
look for resort packages that include at least half board, since this will save you money compared to paying for everything separately. Availing a water villa. We would all want a vacation in a cottage that is perched over the lake. It seems like something out of a dream, right? The nightly rate for a stay in a water villa may be anywhere from $500 to $5,000. It depends entirely on the resort that you choose and the facilities that come with it. You may even have a water slide in addition to a spa and a glass floor panel. You may probably guess how the sum of all these factors might affect the pricing. The other factor that might affect the price is when you choose to stay. Prices during the peak season reflect the current climate. It's possible that if you remain for a longer period of time, your nightly cost will drop even more. Therefore, if you stay for five nights, it will cost you less per night than if you stay for one or two nights. A helpful tip for the Maldives is to try reserving a beachfront hotel and then inquiring about the cost of upgrading to a water villa for only a few nights. Staying in Malé. On the island of Malé, which is home to the majority of the country's administrative and commercial centers, you'll find the city of Malé. Malé International Airport is where you will very certainly make your first landing in the Maldives after your flight at Valana Airport. And while it is well worth spending the night there, you shouldn't expect it to be the vacation of your dreams there. A journey to a local island that has a lower population density is the way to go if what you're looking for is an experience that is more genuine and representative of the local culture. You will be able to relax on the beaches that are more private, and you'll be able to enjoy strolling on the sand rather than on the concrete roads. It is highly recommended that anyone interested in learning more about this beautiful location go on a Malé city tour. If you are arriving in the Maldives late in the day, it is recommended that you spend the night in Malé in order to have enough energy the following day to get to your resort. If you arrive there early and have the whole day to enjoy yourself, you'll get more value out of the experience. Should I go to a nearby island? You should dress appropriately if you have the opportunity to visit Malé or any of the nearby islands. As part of their paid excursions, several resorts offer half-day tours to nearby islands. It's a good approach to get a glimpse of what island life is truly like for Maldivians. Shoulders and lower legs should generally be covered. Whatever is knee length and tee short is okay. Some individuals seem unconcerned about their mid-thigh attire. Keep in mind that respect is more important than everything else. You must completely cover yourself whenever you enter a mosque. Therefore, a long-sleeved blouse, full-length skirt, and trousers are needed. If you need to cover your head, a sarong might be useful. Even if a small island is quite different from a resort in terms of amenities, the experience may be just as fulfilling. Travel tip for the Maldives. Ferries to the nearby islands cost as little as two US dollars each way. Although it could take longer than a speedboat, the site is amazing and you save a ton of money. What is the Maldives like for diving? What a remarkable feat. Divers go to the Maldives year round for a variety of reasons. Most of the time, a wetsuit is not essential due to the warm water. The aquatic life in the Maldives is the best in the world. The vibrant reefs attract a wide variety of fish in a wide range of colors from all over the world. There are many diving shops in the area, so you'll be able to plan your day's activities while you're on the island. Here, novices are also well served. The reef or nurse shark, octopus, turtle, and manta ray may all be seen. Diving aficionados should seek an island with a dive package of 5, 10, or 15 dives while on vacation in the Maldives. It's a lot less expensive than if you don't. Clothes to pack for the Maldives trip. High-end fashion and an idyllic island combination are not necessary for the Maldives. One will be in a bikini and sarong for most of the day, and the weather was hot and humid at times. Wearing the lightest and most breathable clothes is the best thing to do to be comfortable. You're more than welcome to bring a few dresses, shorts, etc. Free-flowing clothes instead of maxi dresses is also essential. A seven to 10 day visit requires no more than two to three outfits. The same is true with footwear. Thongs and a pair of flats are all you actually need. Some restaurants on some islands have sand flooring, so heels aren't necessary. Tinted moisturizer and mascara are all you need for makeup. What else should you be taking on the trip to the Maldives? Sunscreen. The Maldivian sun may be brutal. It may still burn swiftly even if the sky is a little cloudy. All of us are familiar with the agonizing discomfort of a severe sunburn. 
You don't want it to ruin your vacation. Insect repellent is a good thing too, especially at night, mosquitoes are out in force. The ground crew constantly spray repellents at night, but once you've been bitten, it's impossible not to itch. Take your camera to capture the breathtaking sunsets that the Maldives is known for. A good book to keep you occupied when you're relaxing. A hat for the purpose of blocking the sun's rays. Hair ties if you have long hair, because the humidity is so terrible, hair is required to be pulled back almost all of the time. We hope you took down notes. It's very helpful for first timers. Have we forgotten something? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching.